There is an awareness in the world now that the greatest threat that concerns our planet is the changing climate. And the changing climate is affecting our environment. Environment degradation is taking place throughout the world. A few years ago, there was devastating floods that took place in Pakistan. The aftermath of which are still being ascertained and being ascertained in the sense that we do not have sufficient information or sufficient research material that indicates what exactly the damage that has taken place. Communities traditionally have just said, we are used to climate changing. One day we have floods, next day we have drought, and then that lasts for a few years and then we have rain. So we're used to that. What the communities don't really appreciate is that something else is happening. Something else that is happening which is outside their control. It is a phenomenon that is going to affect our lives for a very, very long time. And it's predicted that in Pakistan, these floods will continue for the next decade. Pakistan has now been classified as one of three countries that have been affected dramatically by climate change. The project was to communicate and educate the five communities in the Sajjawal Union uh, Council as to climate change and, uh, and then how to adapt to climate change and environmental degradation. We used a three-pronged approach. The first module was the Bethak or storytelling module. The second one was structured knowledge through PowerPoint presentations. And the third one was simulation through the Nautanki or theatrical production. It seemed an important aspect for us in the Earth Trust to go to a community and to explain what it is that is happening that perhaps they have not appreciated. And indeed, when I gave them their first talk, talked to them about the environment, in their particular part, because they were dramatically affected by the floods, all of them. Entire villages were wiped out. So when I showed them slides, not only of what had happened in Sindh, but also what had happened in the rest of Pakistan, they were somewhat astounded. They thought that the only damage was done was in their location. I also showed them slides of the damage that has been done by climate change in the globe. It went through various countries, Australia, Siberia, United States, South America, Europe. And again, they were amazed that this is actually happening on, on a global scale. It was uh, amazing for these people to realize that they had not been chosen by God and this was not God's wrath being um, uh, vented out uh, on them specifically, that this was a concept that was there uh, all through. And uh, a lot of people felt very empowered by that knowledge to realize that you're not alone and uh, that in a way you're not defenseless because there are others who are going through a similar fate. They are trying to uh, grapple with their reality and so you can do the same. The initial visits were right after the floods, so there was a lot of devastation. There was a lot of hurt, a lot of anger. They were looking for comfort at that point in time. They were looking for, that, um, for somebody coming in and telling them that, yes, we are here, we can help you. But that was uh, not the kind of um, agenda that Indus Earth had gone in with. They were talking more about empowerment, about helping them come up with the solutions, as opposed to going and offering them those solutions. And it seemed to me that there needed to be some sort of interaction with the community where they would appreciate something of this nature to a greater extent. So we started, our project started with uh, providing them with homes because their homes had been damaged. Traditionally, they use timber from the forests. Part of our approach is to say that you have to consider that you will cut down trees for very specific reasons and not the way that you've been treating them traditionally 
in your lives because the picture is changing. The picture is changing. The more trees that are removed, not only from your area, but throughout the country, leads to a situation like the floods. We started to train these people how to build proper houses using two materials, bamboo and earth. As a matter of interest, the last rains that came, the very heavy rains that came to Sindh, not a single one of these houses had any leaks or any damage done to them whatsoever, which obviously pleased us enormously. In the subsequent uh, visits, when the villagers started using the techniques that Indus Earth Trust had imparted to them, we saw a change happening. And I remember coming back from those uh, visits with a feeling of euphoria. I think I can only describe it like that. Um, excitement and a feeling of achievement of having made a difference to those people. There is a very strong visual culture here, but that visual culture is related to the rally making that is happening in these villages. So when we went into these homes, we saw new images, not the sort of patterns that we've been seeing in, in rallies that are being sold here and there, but images that pertained to their lives and their individual stories. So, you know, you saw the cockerel, you saw the camel, uh, you saw movement, you saw migrations, you, you saw all, all of those sort of things. We thought this could be an exciting way of communicating through the visual culture that is there. So we got uh, the children, the women and children within communities involved and we started with them sketching on slates and we asked a series of questions from village to village and we sort of took them down a journey, down the journey that we had gone with them over that one year and down a journey that we knew that they had gone from the floods onwards. And when we asked questions, we were amazed at some of the responses that we got. And a lot of the responses also pertain to in this Earth's interventions with the hand pumps and the lights and street lights especially, and the houses. And then we got the mothers to interpret those images and the learning that had happened through them into really patterns. From that learning, from the learning of the Baithak and from some of the responses to uh, Shahid's uh, presentation to them. We then got students who were conversant in Sindhi and who had worked with community projects from um, Indus Valley School of Art and Architecture to come in and help us out. So they had a mime uh, that they presented to the community. <laughs> <laughs> Through all of this though, what they never lost was their sense of hospitality and we were offered a cup of tea uh, right after the floods and uh, we were allowed to uh, asked, in fact, invited into their homes. We sat with them, had a cup of tea. These were people right of the floods, right after the floods, when they had nothing with them. So that sense of bonding um, happened over those betaks that we conducted with them. The reason for coming up with this sort of very slow and steady method where we introduced the betak, then we had Shahid go in with the more structured learning and then trying to come up with a, with a theatrical uh, production that emanated from within the community. The reason for doing all of this is that we wanted to interweave these lessons into the fabric of the community. We wanted these to become part of the subculture that is communicated from one generation to the other. Just just as they now feel empowered to come up with a, with a production and to sort of challenge those who had come into their space to teach them. I think now they're feeling that they can take ownership of their space, ownership of their learning and, and teach us a few things as well. <laughs> 